Kia ora koutou. Waka taka te hau ki te uru, waka taka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki tai. E hi aki ana te atakura, he tio, he huku, he hauhu, te hei mauri ora. Thank you very much, Liz, for the kayakia. This is the start of the ceremony, which is a historic occasion. Tēnā kōta, tēnā kōta, tēnā kōta katoa, shalom, goedemiddag. The story of Anne Frank is well known to us all. A young woman who has been described as the teenager of the 20th century, who wrote a diary which is in the 10 most read books in the world. She died in Bergen-Belsen after typhoid, and she was thrown in a mass grave. Yesterday would have been Anne Frank's 92nd birthday. And I was giving some thought today as I was on my way here as to what sort of person 92-year-old Anne Frank might be. And I suspect she would be a courageous fighter a person who stood up for all those who are discriminated against, a person who got things done. That's who she would be today. And we have someone two years her senior in Boyd Clapp who's all of those things as well. <clears throat> Boyd, you are a remarkable person. Uh, you never give up. Your drive and your energy are extraordinary. And while you have thanked the many people who've supported you in putting this project together, it's your drive, your commitment and your enthusiasm that bring us here today and bring us to the unveiling of this memorial. The discrimination and the anti-Semitism and the appalling Holocaust that Anne Frank was in the midst of is the worst example we can think of in our lives of discrimination and hatred. Yet every single day, we see elements of it around us. And so every single day, it's our job to call that out, to strive to build the world that Anne Frank talked about the world of hope and the world of courage and the world of love and the world of beauty. The fact that she could say that in the end she believes all people are good at heart. And so that's why what I take from today. This is an opportunity for us to acknowledge the life of an extraordinary young woman and recommit ourselves every single day to end discrimination and promote inclusion and respect. Two years ago, we were here and planted the first 15 kopai trees. They are on this side. They are the 15 trees that recognize the 15 short years she had of her life. And from here, you see 75 trees. And the 75 trees are the years she never had because she would, at that time, could have been 90. When we had the trees planted, we discussed with the council uh, what we would have between the 15 trees and the 75 trees. And it was suggested initially that we would have two seats there so people could sit, meditate, and realize and concentrate on what happened. But I met 12 months ago a man called Matthijs Sillier who is the deputy head of the School of Design at uh, the Victoria University. And Matthijs and I started talking and he said, philosophically, we need something different. We need not just uh, a statue of Anne Frank, we need something that people say, what is it? It will make them think. Unlike a bench in the park, None of the seats offer the expected privilege of the idyllic view over the valley. Instead, they engage in a simple object theater. And here's something that you will not experience because you've already been here, but 
if a new visitor were to walk up that path and the eye level comes level with the grass, will all, all of a sudden think, hey, someone has left some chairs behind. It is in, in that unassuming way in which the memorial will introduce itself to the visitors. It's important to have the memorial, to never forget. Anne Frank gave us a message of hope and inspiration, and that is what this memorial does. It's a call on us to continue to actively promote tolerance and inclusion, understanding and human rights for all. It's a call not to remain bystanders when injustice and discrimination occurs. It's a call to teach our children to be resilient and speak out in their schools when they see this happen. And that is also not an exception, unfortunately. It is also a call on us that we keep her message of hope and inspiration alive by focusing on what binds us, our shared humanity. We remember her and the 1.5 million children who were murdered in the Holocaust. We give another opportunity to others to reflect on the Holocaust and what it means, and we are reinvigorated to fight anti-Semitism and forms of hatred. But I'll take one to lent away. You stuck your way to Carson up. You nam the vogels in your armen. You greep the zachte blauwe hemel. My all die duizend fingers van je blad. White candles. <laughs> but spring always came again. You lit your white candles. You took the birds in your arms. You see the soft blue sky with all the thousand fingers of your leaves. But Spring always came again, even though so many trains were leaving here and there was nothing left to live for. We're familiar with Anne's diary and it is a call and a challenge for us all to root out the inequity that we see around us. She was 14 years of age and there is no doubt that she was a wahini toa, demonstrating great bravery, courage and tenacity of spirit. Our young people are also faced with many challenges and will themselves need to be courageous and strong. They live in a time of uncertainty for the future. However, I feel heartened and reassured by their response to step forward and represent their generation. They have a deep understanding of the issues and are brave enough to engage in whatever ways they can. It is these actions that stifle the ignorance and prejudice that lead to the type of discrimination and persecution that Anne experienced. And may I suggest, when you really want to experience what discrimination is, the two of you face each other and somebody sits on the other chair and is not part of it. In memory of Anne Frank and all other children who lost their lives because of discrimination, intolerance, and prejudice.